Hi. Uh, today is a day that I've been looking forward to uh, for quite a while. I'm going to head out uh, for a camping trip uh, into the Mongolian steppe. Uh, I've been looking forward to doing this by myself for a while with the exception of uh, some help with transportation there and back. But the word got out and a few people asked to join and uh, it looks like we'll be taking a small group uh, after all. So uh, in spite of that, it's still going to be a lot of fun and I'm going to try to make a few videos to take you guys along with me too. So I uh, hope you enjoy this clip. So we're going to the uh, black market uh, bazaar for some last minute supplies and uh, I'll try to sneak a few uh, video clips while we're in there. So just on a side note, they were saying that uh, you have to be really careful about your pockets and uh, all the valuable stuff you have with you because there's lots of pickpockets, mostly young kids. And uh, if you catch somebody, one of those kids trying to <laughs> steal something from your pockets, they say the best thing is not to catch them because their little friends will come running to defend them and you'll be sorry. The best thing to do is whack them in the face as hard as you can to give them a, a quick stiff punishment as a deterrent. <laughs> so uh, I won't be smacking anybody, but uh, it's kind of funny. Үнтэлтүн бах болов. Дөрүүдээр сагж байна. Төрчигэр хүмүүс бас сагж. skin grapes. Хаата гараа хий гэж байгаа. We thought the kimchi so this is a Korean style food with lots of uh, little yeah. sample dishes on the side and but the name is Chinese food with meat and kimchi and fried potatoes and some kind of um, boiled flour type tortilla yeah. <laughs> So we've gone about as far as we can go without a or with our vehicle and uh, now we're trying to decide uh, how much we want to go. some kilometers back into the mountains or stay a little bit closer and have the possibility of you know visitors in the evening so um, I don't know we're gonna talk over I'll let you know right now we're uh, busting all of our equipment across this frozen river it's kind of dangerous because uh, it's almost May and as you can see the ice is really slushy and we're hoping that nobody's gonna fall through that, that side of the river over there has a really steep bank and there's nowhere to pitch camp, so uh, there's a really mild uh, beaching area on the far side, so, and it also has access to uh, a section of flowing water where the ice has already receded, so I think that's going to be the ticket as far as our camp uh, space. I'm really happy doing uh, movie stuff and traveling and getting to see the world. Uh, but there's really something about camping, getting away from everybody, uh, solitude, being with nature that uh, just kind of scratches an itch that nothing else quite does the trick for. Uh, it's just like such a deep sense of contentedness and uh, beauty and peaceful and um, I wish I could do this more often. And I wish you know you guys could be here with me. Found this little guy walking around out here. 
Look how perfect those front teeth are. Oh my gosh. Uh, must have had a good dentist. Okay, those are the guys going back. Uh, they've left me alone because uh, the car can't get back up the hill. It's stuck. So they're all going back to kind of dig it out while I am responsible for finding our home for the next three days. So uh, we did go ahead and beach on the other side, got all of our gear across. And uh, right now I'm looking for, uh, wow, look, the snow is just falling off chunks at a time. So I think another day or two and we would have been too late to get across. So, which begs the question how we're gonna get home in three days from now. So this place is gorgeous. Okay, so this is our place right here. Uh, it's the mouth of a fork in the river and uh, fresh flowing water to drink, beautiful landscape. This morning and had some visitors in camp last night. Uh, a few cows were. There's horses in the background. I don't know if you can see in a, a yak or two. And this guy right here coming down the hill looks like he's a cross between a cow and a yak. But uh, they wandered in here in the middle of the night, I guess, to go get some water. Looks like they're pretty used to people. Just free range. So here's what's left of our uh, camp. <clears throat> they're tearing down because we're heading back to uh, the capital. I have, uh, this is my little one-man bivy. Uh, I use it for basically storing equipment. And uh, that is the tent that somehow made it through the night against the wind. I have no idea how that happened. Uh, little campfire that we had. And there is my home. It's all furled up. It's a, uh, it's a hammock and it has a rain fly. So when it's all opened up, it looks like a, uh, pup tents suspended in the air and uh, it rocks all night and uh, it's really comfortable actually, believe it or not. I thought I wouldn't like it because I'd be all kind of mode when I was sleeping, but it sleeps pretty flat and uh, uh, I'm going to be taking that with me where I go from now on. So. Okay, one last goodbye to our beautiful campsite. Water's a little brown because uh, the snow up on the mountains is melting and running down and carrying a lot of uh, dirt and dust with it, so uh, it's got a brown color. They said it's been like that for the last few days and should be a few more days, but then it'll be crystal clear again. So, anyway, I hope all of you are enjoying your 9 to 5s back home. Uh, wow, so last night was really cold. Um, and because we're in a valley near a river, the wind is uh, flowing through this kind of depression and it's it's gale force wind. So uh, the other guy, I have a hammock, but the other guys have a, uh, uh, a tent. And my hammock does pretty good, but the tent almost blew away last night. So I'm not sure what we're gonna do tonight. We don't want a repeat of the same thing. So we stayed in a, a yurt or as they call them a gear last night uh, because the wind was just too much for the uh, for my friend's tent. I have a hammock that goes between two trees and I can put it in line with the wind and it's not too bad uh, but they have a like a five-man tent that's really tall and it was no match for the wind so we uh, found these uh, I wouldn't call them nomads because they have a permanent home there but we found these people who live here 
and uh, they rented us a yurt for the night and uh, it was pretty cool. We got to cook in warm temperatures and had a great night so uh, it was really fun. On a side note, uh, the gentleman over there who's the owner of this little ranch area here uh, gave us his phone number and said anytime we want to come here and go trekking out into the uh, into the step they will pack up all the horses and take us and they charge about six dollars uh, per horse per day so you know we could easily take five or ten horses for ten days out into the uh, wilderness and it wouldn't cost very much so I'm gonna keep that in mind for the future um, but it's been a beautiful few days sorry I couldn't make more videos but uh, as you can imagine there's limited electricity and uh, I had a little bit of juice left in my laptop so I powered the, up the phone and uh, um, that is the uh, entirety of my trip so hope to see you all again soon bye so we've been walking really far back in the woods uh, I mean we're really far back and everywhere we go we just see, we see horses milling around. <laughs> I'm sure they belong to somebody, but uh, we're pretty far back. So a really nice gentleman uh, offered to help us taxi our gear back to our pickup point, uh, which is by a footbridge and there's no transportation across. Probably the truck could make it across this shallow crossing, but it was really nice of them. Very unique vehicle and uh, saved us about four hours of toting all that gear. So, uh, very thankful for that. Making lunch in the car. <laughs> I'm swearing. <laughs>